Tranquilo. Jair. I'm Frederick Binkerton. That's absolutely not true. Actually, I'm Nicholas Stack, and we are continuing on with our I Don't Know Stuff series focused on vintage audio and beyond, but we're starting with the basics. And as I told you before, I don't like to spend a lot of money, so uh, I don't like to spend like 10 bucks a bottle on the vinyl cleaning solution, although I have heard it's very good. Um, I've also uh, uh, found out that you can make it for pennies at home. So, uh, I'm gonna give you the quick recipe. Bing! Look on the, the TV there, we'll, uh, we'll get that up there. Bing! Um, the recipe is very simple. You can see uh, the stuff that we have here. Um, I don't really need to move it, I'll just point at it. Um, and then we'll, we'll make it, because I want you to see me make it, because I think it's important. Get yourself an old, empty jar, and then you can just use it. As long as it's a sealable jar, it won't evaporate and it will stay in there. Now, the ratio that you're gonna make, as I pointed out in this recipe, and on bing, up here, uh, you'll see uh, that it's a very simple, simple recipe. It's four to one distilled water to isopropyl alcohol with a few little drippy drips. So, very simple. We are gonna use just for uh, our purposes today, a quarter cup, and we'll do four to one. So that's gonna be uh, a full cup of water. Oh my God, I'm doing it on a camera. Oh! Oh, I did it, I did it, splash it. Ooh! Oh, I splashed it. Three! I'm gonna need a towel. Oh! Four! Okay, we'll get a towel, just a second. And then one, count them one, just so you'll be careful. The, the isopropyl alcohol has been kind of scarce these days. And I will say that we were, um, that if you go to certain places, you can find this 99% isopropyl alcohol, which is gonna be very useful to you when you're actually um, cleaning electronics and whatnot. So um, I recommend getting that. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to find. You can get it in electronic stores or you can also get it in grow stores. So now we have our four to one ratio, Dawn. Dawn dish soap. The reason Dawn is Dawn cuts the grease. You don't want to go crazy. This is a couple of drops, one, two. Oh, that's probably a little too much. All right, and then the secret ingredient, we had some discounted jet dry that we got because I had a broken cap. But the jet dry is, uh, it's actually a water wicking agent. And what that does is it gets the water to evaporate just to tickle faster. A couple drops of that in your solution. And uh, it wicks the water away from the record a little bit. So that's it. Very simple, very cheap. Put that in your jar, shake it up, not too much. Let the bubbles die down, dry that off. We'll be right back. Go to your dollar store, get yourself two spray bottles. I think these are fairly diminutive, but these were the ones that my wife found at the dollar store. Two bottles, all right? One bottle is gonna be straight distilled water. This is gonna be your rinse. So you can just put a little distilled water in your spray bottle, bada bing, bada boom, and you're good to go. Again, this is gonna be your rinse. And we got that sweet, sweet, always save distilled water. You know it's the good stuff if it says always save on it. All right, uh, so one, one is your distilled water, and then you're gonna put your solution that we just made into your other spray bottle. Again, the funnels help a little bit. There we go. All right, the juice is loose, as they say. All right, so we got our spray bottles. Now, next step, get a dirty fucking record. You're gonna use microfiber cloths. Um, there are some other materials that you can use, but I found that uh, this is all you should really use. So uh, you don't wanna scratch the record. You wanna be as delicate with the record as possible. Uh, when I first started learning about how to handle records and whatnot, I was always told, oh, don't touch the record. Don't touch the grooves of the record. I thought it was because you could damage the grooves 
No, it's because you put big old fat fingerprints on it like that. So uh, this is uh, Grateful Dead, one from the vault. This was a, a, a generous gift from my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Love this record, spit it all the time. And again, probably spun this before I really knew how to, uh, to handle the record properly. So you're gonna, I, I like to put my hand here, sort of brace it against my body and let that solution that we've just done spray it all over the record. Mind the label, because it's paper, but don't be afraid to get it wet. I think uh, as people who, who, uh, who are just getting into records and just getting into vinyl, there's like a fear factor. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna mess it up and I'm never gonna be able to play it again. Well, you can, but this is how you, how you don't do that. So, you know, brace it against your body, spin it around. You're really only supposed to be handling a record by either the edges or by touching the label as such. Again, uh, you know, all records are cleanable and uh, you shouldn't be too afraid of, of, of damaging them, but uh, they're made to be enjoyed, you know what I mean? And yes, records can be incredibly expensive and you can spend a lot of time and energy collecting them, but they're ultimately meant to be played. So once I've done that solution on one side, um, you know, you might feel okay about that, then hit it with a little bit of distilled water. That'll knock down the static, that'll knock down all the other things that you're doing. You are imparting a fair bit of static into your record by clearing it this way. Um, using your dry brush as you play, which you should be doing every time you play a record. That's what they mean when they say you should clean a record every time, not this. I think this is extreme. You do this when you get a record. You do this when you're cataloging your stuff. You do this when you see a big fat thumbprint on one of your favorite records. But other than that, um, I kind of do this as I go. I enjoy this. There's some, there's some sort of like um, zen thing about cleaning records. And uh, it's one of the weird things that I've come to seriously enjoy about this hobby is, you know, you can, you can actually uh, increase the value, increase the grade of a record by getting it clean. And uh, you can even get a few more bucks for it if you're trying to, to, to sell it or, or uh, trade it up or, or whatever. Um, again, I feel pretty good about that. I would hit this side again with just a little bit of the distilled water and knocks down the static and it, it sort of gets off that solution. You don't want to leave any residue on your record if you can help it. Um, so yeah, I didn't have, <laughs> I was joking with uh, my lovely wife, who's also my camera op back here. I was uh, joking that I've, I've cleaned all my records. I don't have any dirty records. And you'll see me switch from cloth to cloth sometimes. That's just to get the moisture off. Um, and, and kind of wrap up the, the, the cleaning job. Again, that's, that's a much cleaner record, and I feel good about that. And you just kind of pop that back into your sleeve and move on to the next one. But, but again, get comfortable doing it and, and clean it up and uh, get to a point where you're just, you know, really, really comfortable sort of wiping down your discs, discs and, uh, and getting them ready for, for optimal playing position because uh, it's important. You know, you can always tell who cares about their record collection by how clean they are. I'll tell you that. Hit it with a little water. Maybe grab the other one. Like I said, I like to have two of the cloths. And again, if I'm, if I'm listening to a lot of records all day, I'll kind of let them sort of air dry in between uh, sessions, uh, listening sessions, and I'll uh, come back and keep them clean. You'll also notice that I'm maintaining a circular uh, motion, I should have said that before, uh, on, the, on the wipes so that you're going with the grooves. Yes, you can kind of go both ways, but um, you want to just kind of be careful not to go against the grooves because then you can actually damage the surface of the record. So that's all there is to it. Uh, you, can, uh, you can actually make your record sound a lot better with a very simple uh, mixture, very cheap and affordable, uh, and uh, <laughs> it's just nice to clean records, I think. I don't know. There you go. Fucking A. Clean your fucking records, you swine. Jesus. Like, just clean them. So there you have it. It's, uh, you know, it's a fun way to, to sort of increase the listening pleasure of your, uh, of your record collection. And it's, it's just a good practice to get into. Um, you know, if you, if you finally have your, if you find a record and you take care of it, you never have to find it again. Till next time.